Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge, brought to us by LJN, the third of the NES WWF games, and it was one of the first games I remember renting when I was young and I had just gotten into professional wrestling. Steel Cage Challenge is the first console game to have a steel cage. In it, we're going to be playing the WWF Championship Mode. You have many wrestlers to pick from. Hogan, Undertaker, Jake Roberts, Sid Justice, Roddy Piper, IRS, The Mountie. For this run, I am going to be picking, for the fun of it, IRS. Yes, the, the Tax Man. From Washington, D.C., Mike Rotunda is who we'll be playing as during the course of this one. Our first opponent is The Mountie. Jacques Rougeau, who, uh, as the Mountie, couldn't wrestle as the Mountie in his home country of Canada. The Mounties weren't quite happy with, uh, them being portrayed as a bad guy. Now, my strategy for this game pretty much is going to remain the same throughout every one of the matchups. But basically, I want to kind of attack on one side, mashing the button when I'm doing the grapple so that I can try to get my grapple off. If you hold the different directions, you'll do a few different moves, though every wrestler ends up having the same set of moves. There's no finishing moves or special moves to be able to be pulled off. But I find, like, alternating sides or, like, holding the direction towards whichever direction the enemy is in is a great way to be able to either hit your attack, a kick, or whatever, or be able to go into that grapple and succeed. There's no exact science to it by any means, either. Anytime you can get your opponent down to the ground, of course, doing some stomps will definitely help out. Each of your opponents has two health bars for you to take care of, though you only have the one to deal with, and you gotta be extra careful. Of course, the longer you have been beating them up, the more they will stay on the ground, so just keep hitting those stomps while they're on the ground to get that health drained. Once you have it fully drained, you have to hit down and B together in order to pin them. Sometimes it's difficult. For the fun of it, I threw them into the turnbuckle, and there's the pin. One, two, three, and we're moving on to match number two. I always thought these little introductions were cool, and of course, uh, with Howard Finkel at the bottom, rest in peace. Our opponent for the second matchup is the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. One of the uh, more popular gimmicks, for sure, and what great theme music that went along with it. DiBiase, though, his time spent elsewhere outside of the WWF is probably some of his better, more memorable matches, though. Now, of course, IRS and DiBiase were tag team partners, so it's kind of like the breaking up of the tag team here. We're going to still do that same strategy, though, that we've been doing. Slamming them down, then doing the stomps, trying to get to the opposite side, or at least getting a little bit up on them, on the body. And that way, they'll have to kind of like move a little bit towards you, which when they move towards you is when you have that opportunity to hit your slam. You also have to move anyway sometimes just to be able to hit your stomps, so it works out well. Your opponents can throw you, and potentially throw you out of the ring, which is always fun. When that happens, try to get back into the ring as soon as you can. I could win matches by count out, but I want to try to win them all by pin.
Sometimes getting that last hit you need just to get the opponent down can be difficult. There's one of my slams on my own. You gotta love that throw. It's kind of like a power bomb toss. It's just ridiculous, but pull that off and one, two, three. We're moving on to match number three. Our third opponent is going to be the Hitman, Bret Hart, one of the greatest of all time. Bret Hart was one of those wrestlers that it just could have a matchup with anybody and end up being entertaining. And I'm not the hugest Bret Hart fan. I always thought he took himself a little bit too seriously. But if you go back and watch Hart versus pretty much any opponent, the matchups just end up being at least minimally good just because of what Hart was able to do. Now this is our first steel cage match. We can pin still, but also escape. It can be difficult when you get knocked to the ground in this game to actually get back to your feet. In order to climb the cage, all you need to do is hold the direction, keep holding the direction in which the cage is. Get your opponent down to the ground and then hold it. If they get back up, you automatically fall off the cage. So that's how you're able to get your opponent to get off the cage if you get knocked down. Just get back up if possible. A lot of these matches I try to win quickly, hitting slams early and then just going right up because sometimes you can hit an early slam and it's enough to keep them down in order to get to the top of the cage and win the match. I always have trouble in these steel cage matches so I try to do them as quick as I can. Thankfully, there is enough right there with that body slam, and we're able to get to the top of the cage, and we're moving on to the next match. Our next opponent is Sid Justice. Sid, Psycho Sid, Sid Vicious, whatever you want to call him. Sid, of course, master of the power bomb, which you kind of have in this, so you could kind of use Sid's move. Um, as well as just some of the best slash worst promos, of course, of all time. There it is. Technically, Sid hit the power bomb, but misses the elbow drop. If you see them run into the ropes on their own, just kind of get out of the way, sidestep, so you don't end up getting hit. Sometimes when you go for just a regular kick or something, you'll end up pinning instead, just because of hitting the directions. Thankfully, I'm able to kick out. Steel Cage Challenge was also released on the Sega Master System, and they actually have a few different wrestlers in that version than they had in this one. Unfortunately, this version doesn't have Papa Shango, Ric Flair, Tatanka, but instead had Jake Roberts, the Mountie, 
Roddy Piper and Sid Justice instead. Sid Justice is a little bit of a tough fight for me here as I'm finally able to drain his health down and go for the pin and we're moving on to the next match. Our next opponent is the Macho Man, Randy Savage, one of the greatest of all time. So many great matches. Of course, him and Ricky Steamboat considered the greatest match of all time by many at WrestleMania 3. Randy Savage was so meticulous when it came to his matchups, he was able to pull off some great matches even if his opponent wasn't the greatest. It's completely overbooked and crazy, but his matchup against the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania is one that actually is pretty entertaining and was one of the Warriors' better matches. For me though, Randy Savage in WCW was also very entertaining. Some of his matchups, especially his feud against Diamond Dallas Page, was some of my favorite stuff from that era. Here we have him down to the second health bar now. Just gonna keep on doing those body slams like we've been doing the whole time. I wish there was different strategies really to kind of pull off, but the AI is pretty consistent, so... If it works, don't fix it, I guess. If you end up getting kicked or hit by your opponent, try to mash the button really quickly and hopefully you're able to get a kick off next after they get done theirs. Here we're able to finish off Macho Man and we're moving on to that next matchup. Our next opponent is Rowdy Roddy Piper. That portrait, though, of Piper they have here, it's something they use in a couple of the games. I just always thought it looked a little weird. I don't know. It didn't look like Piper to me. This one's another one of those steel cage matchups, so our same strategy as before. Try not to go down, because it can be hard to get back up before uh, the opponent gets to the cage. But also, we would like to try to beat the matchup early if we can. If not, just focus on his health and pin him at the end when it ends up getting down low. Like I said, it can be difficult sometimes to just get back to your feet, even near the beginning of the matchup. Thankfully, their stomps are able to do quite a little bit of damage for us and help us out as far as draining health. Roddy Piper was one of the best promos of all time. Just so entertaining every single time he ended up grabbing a hold of the microphone. While he was well past his prime in the late 90s, his run in WCW, since I was really into wrestling at that point, was very memorable, his feud against Hulk Hogan in WCW, even though they honestly should not have been facing off against one another at that point as a main event. Still, I have a lot of memories, the whole, like, marquee with Hogan versus Piper, them showing that old music video or whatever it was, and 
then later on you had the match in San Francisco and Piper went to like Alcatraz in order to do stuff. Once we get Piper's health all the way down, I'm going to go ahead and exit out the cage and move on to the next match. Our next opponent is The Undertaker, the legendary Undertaker, still going to this day. He just had the Boneyard matchup against AJ Styles at this year's WrestleMania. What an interesting matchup that was. The whole kind of cinematic matchup thing they got going now with like it feels like a movie instead of an actual wrestling match is something that uh, I'm still getting used to for sure. And they used quite a bit of it recently. There are so many, though, great matches and memories with The Undertaker over the years with wrestling. His matchups, of course, against Shawn Michaels were absolutely some of the greatest of all time. And Taker, for the most part, was one of those workers that could work with most people. And I say most because even Taker was limited in pulling out a great matchup against the Giant Gonzalez. For me, though, Undertaker vs. Mankind is probably my favorite few. Mick Foley is my favorite wrestler of all time, so... That was when I was first kind of introduced, honestly, to Mankind slash Mick Foley was the Undertaker feud, the initial one. and That was right when I was really getting into pro wrestling full time. Saying just above him here, you can see that the kicks are able to land as he's trying to hit us at the same time, and then he walks away for a moment, coming back towards us right into a body slam. If you can't hit the top part with the stomps, you can go down to the legs and hit those. Like I said, sometimes it can be difficult to actually get the pin to go off. But once it does, we've pinned The Undertaker and we're moving on to the next match. Next up is Jake the Snake Roberts, one of the greatest promos of all time some great matchups as well. He had extremely good ring psychology. And he's one of those wrestlers that, yes, had tons and tons of demons and somehow is still kicking to this day. In fact, still a uh, active member of wrestling, being a member of the AEW roster as a manager for Lance Archer. Robert's also the master of the DDT, something that's now become just a regular move, but still, Robert's DDT, always devastating, just the way he dropped people and planted them. This is the second to last match. We only have one more left to go after this one. We just got to take on Jake Roberts, finish this matchup off, and then we have our matchup against Hulk Hogan next. That's going to be another one of those steel cage matchups. One last body slam is what we need, and we can pin Jake Roberts, and we're moving on to the final matchup of the game.
Last but not least is the immortal Hulk Hogan. We have to take him on before we are the new World Wrestling Federation champion. Hogan starts off the match a lot of punches and I'm just trying to like beat him out slowly walking down step by step as I'm kicking. That usually gives me a good opportunity to land hits going the opposite direction of him and then landing kicks along the way. That was a flying clothesline basically that Hogan hit us with. Thankfully it's not enough to put us on the ground for long. Hogan then goes for an elbow drop, just flying all around the ring here. Hogan moving more than he ever has. The punches and kicks are enough to drain most of Hogan's health here. We just have a little bit longer to go. If he ends up whipping you at any point, try to mash the buttons to get out of it before you end up running into the cage. There I hit the uh, power bomb like move. Once we get Hogan's health down, we're going to pin him and win ourselves the WWF World Championship. So there you have it, WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. I feel that this is one of the better of the WWF games. There's four on the NES, and I think this one ends up being one of my favorites to actually go back and play. Which one of the WWF games on the NES was your personal favorite? Which one do you have the most nostalgia for? At any point, you can press A at the credit screen and then go back to the main menu and start the game all over again. But with that, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.